What is good internet? It is Spirit of Paradox here and welcome back to another video. Today we are continuing Ultimate Wolverine vs the Hulk Part 2. And I really do enjoy this issue because in this issue we get to see the Hulk's perspective in this storyline. But before we start you know the deal, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. We cover lots of stuff about the Ultimate Universe both the old and the new, and we also cover other things on the channel as well. Let's start the video. We begin on the day of Ultimate Bruce Banner's execution. They are going to kill me, and they are going to do it with a Megaton bomb. I am single-handedly responsible for the deaths of 815 innocent civilians in New York City. 62 of those civilians, those people, were under the age of 13. Kids. I am responsible. I... No. I murdered 62 kids. My name is Bruce Banner, and I deserve to die. And while this dialogue is happening... We see that Ultimate Iron Man has dropped Bruce Banner on this helicarrier with the nuke and seems to put this bracelet in his hand but then flies away. And then after he flies away from a good distance we see Bruce Banner starts to turn into the Hulk right before the explosion goes off. And when it does detonate we see the Hulk basically survive the blast and swim away. And the Hulk, well he is not happy at all, because he knows what just happened with them trying to blow him up. And he even says how he thinks Banner is stupid, and he was stupid for trusting Betty, and he believes that Betty tried to blow him up. And then we see the Hulk see a giant whale, and I guess he climbs on it to refuge. In the next page, we go to Omaha Beach in Normandy, and we see these two men standing next to this monument. Do you know how many brave men died that day, Jimbo? It's James. Pugh, <laughs> you kids don't know what war is. When I was your age, I couldn't wait to fight the Cractus. Wow, I'm, I'm jealous. That's the problem with these damn super soldiers and mutants. They fight your battles for ya. Oh man. One man with a gun in his hands can't make a difference no more. And then we see the kid finds out that it's the Hulk and he shouts holy shit. But by the time the Hulk comes to shore he turns back into Bruce. And Bruce is saying bonjour. One month later from the explosion, and we see that Bruce Banner is in France, Paris specifically, and he is having a therapy session. And the therapist is asking him multiple questions like, how does he feel, and did he call her? And her, she is referring to Ultimate Betty Ross. And Bruce basically tells her like, yeah, I feel good, I did call her, but I hanged up. But the therapist asks another question. How do you expect the anger to go away if you don't talk to her, David? I'm not angry, aren't you? No. <sighs> We've been working together for a month, David. You're a vastly intelligent man. A quick study. Brilliant. Really. So much that I can't even detect your accent anymore. You could pass for a genuine Parisian. Zoo are for me. But I fear your intelligence gets in your way of growth. Maybe intelligence is responsible for my growth. You can't grow if you're in denial, David. I'm not in denial. She doesn't love me. I get it. She's over. I get it. But the therapist asks an intriguing question. Why won't you let yourself be angry at Betty? 
especially after the bullshit she put him through. And the thing is, the more questions this therapist asks, the more control Bruce Banner starts to lose, and gets angrier and angrier. And he even tries to say, I'm not angry at Betty. You understand, David, that I'm one of the best therapists in Europe. Trust me, you're angry. And then we see him just trying to hold it in. I'm seriously, I'm not. And then she asks a serious question. Then why do you hang up when you call her? What are you afraid she'll say? Are you afraid she'll tell you why she left you? Are you afraid she'll tell you why she betrayed you? Are you afraid she'll tell you that you're impotent, David? And as soon as she asks that question, the Hulk comes out. And then, boom! Hulk throws the chair that Bruce Banner was sitting on out the window. And then we hear Hulk shouting in a fit of rage, Hulk name not David. Hulk no impotent, Hulk no angry, as we see this violent explosion happen due to the Hulk's transformation, and I'm pretty certain this woman is not alive anymore. In the next page we go to one month from the event in France, and we see Bruce Banner is in some bar and is using the phone, and he's having this monologue in him with himself saying, why do I keep doing this to myself? What would I even say? Betsy, I love you. I love you and I miss you and I'm still alive. And then somebody picks up the phone and he realizes it's another man. And he says in his head, I'm still alive, you bitch. And then we see him start to turn into the Hulk. And in this universe, if you are around the Hulk after Bruce Banner transforms, more than likely, you're dead. Like, don't even bother running. Don't even bother calling for the ultimates. Just accept your fate. It's over. Like everybody that we've seen in this comic so far, running is futile. Fighting is just dumb. It's over. After the transformation in the bar, Bruce has to move all the way into Ireland in County Clare and we see these farmers are basically just taking the piss out of him. What you eating there Bixby? Sandwich. What kind of sandwich? And then we see the ginger lad say, leave him alone Pat. What? I just want to know what kind of sandwich our friend Bixby's fixed himself with today. It's it so? lettuce, tomato, and tofu turkey. And these guys basically just laugh at him and like, what the hell is tofu turkey? And Bruce is just getting angry here and he's just like, dude, I've been working on this ranch with you boys for two weeks now, Pat, and every day we go through this, how amusing is it that I'm vegan? And the guy says, you didn't answer my question. And Bruce is just getting pissed and more pissed. It's tofu, Pat. Tofu that tastes like turkey. And this guy is just ripping into Bruce. Well, at least the cows ain't got nothing to worry about. And you know what they say about men who don't eat meat, Bigsby? And when this happens, Bruce Banner loses control again. An Ultimate Hulk wasn't having any of those violations towards Bruce and he comes out and straight up murders these farmers and their cattle. And I mean he literally eats the farmers and the cows. And we just see the farmers get torn to pieces and we can see the Hulk straight up biting a chunk out of one of the cows. Like this is some savage shit. This is why I love Ultimate Hulk. This is what will happen if you get a truly savage Hulk. But my only problem with this guy is that he's green. He's supposed to be grey in the Ultimate Universe. Damn it, David Lindelof. And then the situation repeats itself again. And we see one month later, that seems to look like India, 
Bruce is back in the telephone booth, and he says to himself, Here we go again, Bruce. Just say something. Anything. You don't pay 16 bucks just to call and hang up. Grow a pair and say something, you pathetic chicken shit. And then, somebody answers the phone, and he says, That's a man. Yeah. Hello? That's a man answering Betty's phone. And then we see him get angry all over again. Eyes turning green and he starts to roar. As the population around the phone booth are like, what the fuck is going on? And we all know they're about to die. In the next page, we go to one month later again. And we see Bruce Banner is travelling in the snowy mountains with a donkey. And he's actually going to the place that we saw him in the previous issue. As Bruce Banner sees the giant door, he even asks his donkey, You think anyone's home? As the donkey just moans in response. And then we see the two giant doors begin to open. When the two doors opened, we are greeted to an old monk who looks and smiles at Bruce Banner. And Bruce is like, uh, hi, hello there. And Bruce responds, you speak English, so do you. Uh, right. How did you find the door? Huh? Oh, I have a map. You have a good mule. I do. Most of them turn around or die. And as soon as the old monk says that, Bruce Banner's mule just drops dead on the spot. And the monk says, well, at least he served his purpose. But Bruce asks, and what purpose is that? And the old man tells Bruce, you are the one who hiked many kilometers up the mountain to get here. How am I supposed to know? And Bruce tells him, I'm looking for the Dalai Lama. And why are you looking for him? I think he can cure me. Cure you of what? Says the old man. And Bruce wants him to cure him of his anger. But the old monk asks, And why do you think he can do this? Because he's the wisest man on earth. And then the old man laughs and says, You flatter the Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh wait, this is a Yoda thing, isn't it? A Yoda thing? You play dumb. Talk about him like he's another person. But you're the Dalai Lama. I am not the Dalai Lama. My name is Steve. And Bruce is actually quite surprised by this. And he's like, oh... And the old man asks Bruce, Would you like a cup of hot cocoa? In the next page, we see that Bruce is in a hall sitting down with his cup of hot cocoa. But someone's speaking to him and says, You might want to blow on it. Steve makes it too hot. And then this kid says, Let me guess, you'd thought I'd be younger? And Bruce is like, Oh, no, that's a... Huh. And the kid says, Let me ask you something. B Bruce. Bruce. What do you know about me? Or, What do you think you know? I know the Parchin Lama... Oh, I have been saying it wrong. My apologies, people. Is considered the greatest scholar in Buddhism. That you are only second to the Dalai Lama. That when he dies, the Dalai Lama, that you're responsible for finding him again. Finding the body he's reincarnated into. And then the kid says, And do you know who found me? Who found the body I was reincarnated into? He did. The Dalai Lama. That's what you do. That's your job over hundreds of years, thousands of years, you find each other. Bingo! So let me ask you this, 
if it's my job to find him and it's his job to find me then who found who first you westerners have much more amusing way of posing this riddle something to do with chickens and eggs shall we walk so what brings you up here dr banner wait you know who i am how the man who gave you the map ran your fingerprint through interpol and called me on my cell and bruce kind of seems a bit sad about this these are dangerous times bruce Sometimes it's better to be technical than mystical. As the two continue to walk through this place, the kid actually shows Bruce a room full of monks praying and asks, aren't they awesome? As we see all of them just doing their thing. But Bruce asks him a question. So, you know why I'm here? Yes. When angry, you transform into a large creature with almost limitless strength and appetite with green or grey skin. It kind of changes sometimes. Changes, yes. Well, I suppose that's the point, isn't it, Bruce? And I'm going to tell you the truth. I actually did not like and still don't like this explanation to why Ultimate Hulk's skin colour changes. For me, in the Ultimate Universe, Ultimate Hulk started off green, and then due to the um, extra Super Soldier Serum that was from Captain America's blood, it mutated the Hulk into being stronger and grey. So really, when he's green in the Ultimate Universe, he's technically weaker. So it's reverse in the original Ultimate Universe. And your point is? This thing you change into. This Hulk. What if you were looking at things another way? What other way is there? Hulk is... He's out of control. Dangerous. A murderer. You speak to him as if he is not you. And then Bruce says... He's not. Ah, but this is the other way. Ask yourself, what if it's not you who changes into the Hulk, but it is the Hulk who changes into you? And then Bruce has this like, kind of like, shocked face moment where it's like, that might actually be the case, even though Bruce Banner was there first for his entire life. And then the kid says, chickens and eggs bruce so let me explain ultimate hulk a little bit more in the ultimate universe hulk is actually supposed to be a more closer depiction to dr jekyll and mr hyde instead of hulk being banner's repressed rage in fact ultimate hulk is the direct opposite in nearly every way to bruce for example bruce is a vegan the Hulk is a cannibal. Bruce Banner is smart. The Hulk is not. Bruce Banner is insecure. Br Hulk is confident. Bruce Banner is impotent. The Hulk likes to fuck, as we saw in the last issue, and also in Ultimate Hulk Annual. But yes, so they're direct opposites instead of actually being like childhood trauma re becoming rage. So, I hope I explained that well, but Hulk being green in this, that was not supposed to happen. I think Damon Lindelof just wanted Hulk to be green for the sake of it. But anyway, let's continue. And then, for the final page, we go to one month later and ten minutes ago from the first issue of Ultimate Wolverine vs. the Hulk. And Wolverine says, Hello, Bruce as both of them have this epic stare down. Hulk says, Hello yourself, Logan. Would you like a hot cocoa? And that is where issue number two of Ultimate Wolverine vs. the Hulk ends. 
Man, how many times am I going to have to keep telling you this? I love this story. In fact, this is my favourite version of Wolverine vs the Hulk. The reason for it is, one, these two are my favourite depictions of Hulk and Wolverine. Two, this one gets the tone and the level of violence right. Three, I'm an Ultimate Universe fan. So I'm an Ultimate Universe fan. And when it comes down to this story, this is definitely one of the stories I'm always going back to and reading over and over again. So yes, people, I highly recommend this story. No, it is not perfect when it comes down to its storytelling, but when it comes down to what this comic is giving you, you're gonna get it, and the violence is really gonna be how it's supposed to be. When Wolverine fights the Hulk, this is not gonna be a clean fight. And I cannot wait to get to the next issue, because that's when shit kicks off. With this issue, it was really to show the Hulk's perspective, and how he got to where he got to, when the first issue was with Wolverine, and then the next issue is when they're basically gonna fight, and it's just gonna be so fucking brutal, people. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I cannot wait to do the next video. In fact, this story makes me want to go and be a writer at Marvel Comics because I would love to write this story. Do you know the fuckery I would do in this story? That you man, oh, oh, you man, if I was a Marvel writer, you don't, you wouldn't deserve me. Like the shit, the good shit you lot would get you Ultimate Universe fans, if I was writing comics on the new Ultimate Universe, mm, oh, you guys would be eating good. You guys would be eating good so well. But anyway, yes, go read this comic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I recommend it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, people.